Cocktail Conversations, candid insights from startup founders, entrepreneurs, and thought leaders from around the globe. My name is Matthew Inman, and I run a website called The Oatmeal. The Oatmeal is a website full of comics, mostly. Um, there's a lot of illustrated stories, uh, some quizzes and things like that. It's, it's basically... Um, it's kind of like a creative dump for me to put anything I can come up with. Not really. I, I, you know, if I had one, I think I would hit it by now. Uh, mostly it's just to make funny comics and keep being funny. Um, go from there. I don't know. When I write, it does. When I speak, it does sometimes. But like, growing up, I was never the funny one. I was kind of the mean, grumpy one. Uh, but somehow that translated to uh, being funny when I make comics. Uh, not really. It always feels like, like in the comic I wrote that for me, creativity and inspiration are like food poisoning. They just kind of show up out of nowhere. So when it's your job to be creative, you know, on a schedule, that can get kind of hard. Um, I've always been, I guess, a creative person. I've always been someone who doodles and someone who writes and someone who's continually making things. Um, so I suppose I am. Yeah, it's, it's hard because, you know, it's like sometimes I feel like, uh, you know, who is this? I, I have this huge audience to please now. And so you almost feel like this responsibility to them. Um, but, you know, I've, I've just tried to do what I've always done, and that is I make comics for me. I make comics that I would want to read and that I would think are funny or compelling. And hopefully that my... my uh, you know, my thoughts about the comic will coincide with my readers. And sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. Uh, the biggest advantage is, you know, with the way the web works now, with Facebook and Twitter especially, um, you can kind of control these, you can, you can harness all these people. You have them waiting for you to put something out. So an advantage there is even if I put out a crap comic, and I do uh, every now and then, I have, you know, hundreds of thousands of people who will still read it. Um, so that's nice, you know, that's kind of a guaranteed audience. Rather than starting from scratch each time and hoping people like it and hoping it gets spread, it'll get shown up anyway. Um, you know, the big, biggest disadvantage of that audience is, like I said before, this kind of continual pressure of keep being funny, more jokes, more jokes, more jokes. And, you, you know, I've always thought that every time I make a joke, that's my last one. Like, every time I write a comic, I'm always like, that's the last comic, I got no jokes left, that's the end of me. Like, and I thought about, about the first comic I made, and I thought that about the 500th comic I made. And I don't know if it's true, maybe it is. I mean, a lot of artists have their season, now it seems to be mine, and when that season's over, I'll go, you know, do so something else. Oh, I don't know, maybe a healthy mix of both. So I, I don't know, even if I, I couldn't, It'd be hard for me to fail dra dramatically now. I think I would just, it wouldn't be a huge thing. It would just be me slowly getting lamer and lamer. And, you know, it'd be like um, like a TV show that's 20 seasons in. Like, you're like, come on, guys. What else do you have left to say? I think if I do fail, that will be it. I'll just be kind of like this old, tired voice. So my plan is to quit before I become old and tired and maybe only do the oatmeal for a couple of years. Uh, I, it's funny, actually, I was just reading this quote from Louis C.K. about farts, and he was describing how he doesn't, he has no uh, kind of snobbery about what humor he makes, what jokes he makes, and he says that fart jokes are wonderful. It's like this trumpet sound that comes out of someone's body and smells bad. It's like the perfect joke, and he just shamelessly uses them, so I agree with him, and same with poop jokes. Like, I don't, I make comics that are compelling and heartwarming and sad and, and smart and then I just make something that are loaded full of poop jokes and I'm completely fine with that. Um, and w regarding cats, it seems to me that like cats, you know, as soon as you introduce one into your comic, every single reader from then on is like, more cats, more cats, it kind of becomes the, the battle cry. Um, I think cats are very kind of, you know, they, they kind of cast a wide net in terms of who likes them. Like with a dog, a dog's more polarizing. You have small dogs, you have big dogs, you have Rottweilers, you have Chihuahuas. But cats, if I draw a cat, it could look like your cat, it could look like her cat, it could be anybody's cat. Uh, so that makes them great for comedy. How to Suck at Your Religion was one that I really enjoyed um, because 
it was written very quickly, and it's it's one of those comics where when I write them, I don't iterate and I don't screw with it and I don't rewrite it and I don't spend weeks and weeks on it. I just write it once and it preserves that visceral tone. And that comic was one of those. I stayed up till three in the clock in the morning. I was so excited about it and I launched it and everybody loved it, or at least everybody that, you know, agrees with me in my terms of my religious principles. Um, so recently that's one of my, my favorites. Uh, other than that, my most recent comic about my house burning down was uh, was kind of a new favorite of mine because it was a complete departure from anything I'd ever done. Yeah. Um, being, you know, it was a story and it was a, you know, wasn't just a bunch of, like I said, poop jokes, even though there are some in there. Um, so that's kind of my recent favorite. Not treating social media as, how do I want to put this? Not using a normal human voice when you use Twitter and Facebook and those kinds of things. I see a lot of these brands that they get on their Facebook page and every other post they make is a, is a coupon, a code, or something like that. And I found if you, if you write there like you would talk to someone in person, um, it works a lot better and it makes it more human. Um, furthermore, one thing that's not necessarily a big mistake, just something that drives me crazy, is everyone seems so preoccupied with getting likes and tweets. And they go around begging everybody, like, can you please just tweet this? Please just like this. And they put all this energy into this social media campaign, and their their focus is on social media. When, you know, really, if you take all that energy you're putting in your your social media campaign and just made your thing better, become a better writer, draw better pictures, make better software, you you will probably see more success than that. Like, I've I've never asked for a tweet in my life, and I never plan on it. I, I get more tweets because I write things that, you know, I work on making my writing funnier rather than working on convincing other people to like things for me.